What is going on YouTube? Dizo here and welcome to MLB The Show 24 in our Boston Red Sox franchise. So today I wanted to jump into a little bit of our setup for franchise mode this year, as well as kind of go over this roster and just kind of how in flux this roster really is. Uh, but getting started, we are doing 30 team control. One profile will be set to a franchise, the other will be set to a CPU. Now the CPU is on essentially all auto. I will show you that here in a second, but here we get into a little bit of the GM kind of contracts that is, I guess, gonna be locked on for this year. Um, everything else essentially is gonna be on or off by default. I will allow the CPU trading uh, essentially because we have 30 team control and we can edit that if need be. So jumping into our settings preset for franchise mode um, and our overall gameplay for this series, we're going to be playing on Hall of Fame hitting and pitching difficulties with all of the tutorial tips off. It's not going to be exactly quote unquote clean screen that you are used to seeing, but uh, we will be using classic pitching and directional hitting um, as you would assume. Um, I am also not doing the auto fielding. I do want to have, you know, I do want to have some fun. I do, I do want to be able to play just a little bit, but not super clean screen. Cause you can see, I will have, you know, the floating ball and, and all that other stuff on, um, no wall ribbon, but, uh, yeah, for the most part, it is, uh, it's going to be as clean as I want it to be at this point in my franchise. So like I said, everything here, mode specific is going to be set to a manual um, the biggest difference is when you are setting up your CPU, you just set everything to auto. Um, the only thing that really matters in gameplay specific is going to be injuries, which I keep the same on both. We are going to be utilizing custom sliders. So you guys can see those here. These are, um, pulled off of operation sports with some of my own testing. Um, so I will link those down in the description of this video. So you guys can see those. Um, but the big one is going to be the trade frequency. We are starting that at zero. If you have been in my videos before, you know how this works. I will link that all in the description box below so you guys can see uh, what those look like. Now, jumping into our budgets for this year, this is really interesting because we really don't have a crazy budget problem going forward. Um, as you can see, 2025 going on, uh, we have a lot of room overall. We are losing some guys. We obviously have one or two that are going to be signed throughout the remainder of this series. You know, Devers is going to be here. Stories is going to be here. Um, you know, Masataki Yoshida will be here. But realistically, this is going to be our opportunity to put a, our fingerprint all over this team. Now, going forward with our roster, I did go ahead and manually injure everybody up to the opening day roster. So if they got hurt on opening day or after, they are not going to be on the injured list. However, if they were injured on opening day or they were placed on the injured list on opening day, it will all be updated. I tried my best to get everybody, um, but I, I could have missed somebody, but hopefully not. Uh, but let's jump into this roster. Now we have a couple veterans on this team. Raphael Devers is only 27 years old. He is the leader, or I guess has been the de facto leader for the Boston Red Sox now that Mookie Betts is gone. And obviously Xander Bogarts is now in San Diego. A lot has been put onto the plate of Raphael Devers as far as not only his leadership, but offensive production. Defensively, we kind of know what we get with Rafi. Um, I hope that the majority of his career, he can be our DH and maybe we can find a new third baseman coming up through the ranks. Now, he's obviously not the only veteran on this squad. We also have Trevor Story, who signed a big contract with the Boston Red Sox. Not a massive contract, but a big enough contract that there are significant uh, obligations to him and this organization for the production that we are expecting out of Trevor Story. And quite frankly, we just haven't seen that yet. $23.3 million a season over the next five years. We're going to need to see that jump up, especially his production overall. 
Now, when it comes to the team itself, we have to look at the young guys. We've got to look at the guys like Brian Bayo, who is coming up. He played last year a fairly decent amount of games overall. I think we are starting to see him come into his own IRL um, a little bit. So hopefully throughout this franchise, we can see that happen as well. Continue to see those war numbers rise. Continue to see the growth of Bayo as we move forward. Now, taking a look, this is a really cool new top prospect screen that we get here in 24. Uh, we get to take a look at all these young prospects, and it all starts with Marcelo Meyer. He is the, I guess, number two or number three prospect right now in all of baseball. I think uh, the only thing really holding Meyer back is going to be his durability IRL. So hopefully that is not something we have to deal with here in the franchise. But one of the guys I am most excited about is going to be Roman Anthony. 20 years of age, a fantastic athlete, and uh, we also get Kyle Teal uh, behind the backstop, Sedane Rafaela, somebody who is going to be starting this franchise just like IRL up with the Major League squad. Nick York, big fan of Nick York, was going to come to the University of Arizona, but decided to uh, play some professional baseball, see how that is going to work out for him going forward. And uh, we also have our PPI for the 2024 season. Some of these guys are, you know, going to give us a legitimate opportunity for a extra draft pick. I'm probably looking at Tristan Casas and Sedan Rafaela. I don't really know if, uh, if some of those other guys are going to see the big leagues this year, but we don't really know. Um, but I think the, the best thing that we have going for us right now is going to be looking at these depth charts going forward and just the overall change that we are going to start seeing with this roster. A lot of young guys coming up very early, possibly, um, and just an overall opportunity to see some really big growth from guys like Meyer, Kyle Teal, Roman Anthony, Rafaela. Uh, do we move Devers over to DH and maybe have a guy like Blaze Jordan? That's not even taking into account all of the offseason moves that we can be bringing in because we are the Boston Red Sox and we are going to be spending like the Boston Red Sox. So hopefully we'll be able to bring some World Series titles back to Boston here in this franchise. Now to get things started, it's not going to be a very easy road. We are starting on the West Coast here in 2024 before going home. The 15th is obviously Patriots Day. We'll make sure we play that game. Um, but here in year one, I wanna be making sure we are moving pretty quickly through year number one. We can start kind of getting our fingerprints on this roster going into year number two, seeing exactly what we can make of the 2024-2025 Boston Red Sox. That is gonna be it for today's video. I wanted to keep this one short, sweet, to the point, um, so we can start jumping into our franchise videos, get episode number one out to you guys. Obviously taking care of business on the West Coast, that's gonna be the big, uh, the big storyline heading into this regular season nick pavetta if you did not check out the community page was the opening day starter that was announced uh, just yesterday from the boston front office so we get nick pavetta on the mound against luis castillo to get us underway with the 2024 season hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did hit this video with a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe for some more mlb the show 24 boston red sox franchise thank you guys all so much for hanging out and as always i'll catch you guys later